Hey, Salvador Brinkman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. And today we're talking about nonprofit fundraising ideas, and specifically, how can you raise money from the crowd? And what are some of the ideas out there that are easy to implement so you can raise more money for your nonprofit organization? And we're getting into that in just a second. Okay, so if you wanna raise money for your nonprofit organization, how the heck can you do that, right? There are so many different avenues nowadays, it can seem overwhelming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distill what I think are the top 10 ideas or ways in order to fundraise or raise money for your nonprofit organization. And to give you just a little bit of context, again, my name is Salvador Brigman. I was actually one of the first people to write about nonprofit crowdfunding. I wrote the book, Nonprofit Crowdfunding Explained, which is available on Amazon. It talks all about crowdfunding and nonprofits. Really great book. In addition, I also wrote the book, Nonprofit Fundraising Hacks. Now, that's actually kind of one of my favorite books I've ever written. And it's a very slim volume. Basically what I did was I went out there, not only with my own marketing knowledge and know how to help people to raise money and to fundraise for nonprofit organizations and donor psychology, but I also went out there and I studied scientific literature. And I really went to the most update, cutting edge scientific findings in terms of why people give money to people that they've never met before, right? And I put all that, I codified all that into one slim volume, which is nonprofit fundraising hacks. So there's also my book out there if you're interested in checking that out. That being said, let's dive into this. Let's get into the, some of the top ways you can raise money for your nonprofit organization today. Okay, so to start off, we're gonna start off with the lowest hanging fruit here, and then we're gonna get into some more of those creative ideas. So the first way is to run a very traditional crowdfunding campaign. So what the heck is crowdfunding, right? Crowdfunding, you might think of GoFundMe, you might think of an online site out there like CauseVox. There are a lot of different nonprofit fundraising platforms and crowdfunding sites that are available. The main thing that differentiates crowdfunding from anything else out there is the fact that you are raising money as an organization, that you have a fundraising goal or a target that you're trying to meet, and there's usually some kind of a duration where you're going to meet that goal or you're not going to meet it. And your role as the organization is basically to promote and market the heck out of that nonprofit crowdfunding campaign. So you've got a fundraising goal of some kind, you have a reason why you're doing it, it might be a project, it might be a one-off initiative that you're trying to do, you're really promoting the heck out of that over the course of maybe 30 days, 60 days, on the longest side, maybe 90 days of a crowdfunding campaign. The shorter the better, because you wanna create urgency among your donor base. So you're promoting that to your, your own donors, the people that are on your donor database, or your donor list, friends and family, um, people that have volunteered with your organization, people that have supported it in any way before, and also individuals that are interested in general in this cause. The biggest takeaway here is that your role as a nonprofit organization is as a marketer. You are marketing the heck out of this nonprofit crowdfunding campaign, and that's very different from the next one that I'm gonna mention in the list. Okay, so the next idea that I have you, aside from running a traditional crowdfunding campaign, again, you might think GoFundMe, you might think some of these other different platforms that are out there, along with running a traditional crowdfunding campaign, you could do what's called peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And I was really one of the first people to make this big distinction between crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And it's so different. They are like completely different animals. And hear me out why, right? With the crowdfunding campaign, your role as a nonprofit organization is to market the heck out of that campaign. With a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, you're actually more of a leader and an educator. And you're kind of providing those fundraising materials that your donors, that your staff, that the people that are involved with your organization, your volunteers can go out there and raise money from their network. So I call this like one-to-one -one if you're just marketing. Your, your role is marketing to a bunch of people, right? When it's peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, you're educating a bunch of people that are participating in that fundraising drive or in that uh, fundraising, kind of like a relay for life thing. They're going out there to their org to the network, to their friends, their family. They're raising money on your behalf. So let me give you just a tiny example here. Let's just say like Relay for Life, right? Relay for Life, you as a participant in this awesome, amazing charity. I actually did this a lot when I was in high school. It was super fun, right? You gotta stay up late. It's like really cool. So with Relay for Life, you are raising money, right? And you're raising money from your friends and family and they're kind of sponsoring you to be able to participate in this super cool and fun event with your friends. And maybe you end up raising a thousand bucks or something like that, or a thousand five hundred or two thousand, you know, it goes up from there. You have your own personal fundraising goal as a participant in that particular driver in that charity or whatever it is. Then all that money from everyone who's participating goes into one big pot. Okay, so if you have 100 people and they're all raising a thousand bucks, you then all of a sudden have raised a hundred grand 
for that charity. Now, you, the nonprofit, your role is not to market necessarily. Your peer, the, you know, peer to peer fundraising, the people that are participating, they are raising money from their peers for you, which is why it's actually a lot easier of an ask. However, your role is to educate those people. What should they be saying when they're going to the door? What should they be saying when they're picking up the phone and calling a friend or a family member? What script should they use? What should they be posting on social media? Um, should they be using some kind of a graphic or something like that? What kind of email should they be sending in order to encourage people to participate? in this fundraiser. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is the next idea on my list. If you've not yet, this is a super important one to check out. And there's some great platforms out there. I always mention Cosvox, Classy.org, some other great ones out there. You can always book a coaching call with me if you wanna learn more about how this can work for you and your organization. The next fundraising idea that I have for you is to tie it to an event of some kind. So the majority, and again, I talk about this in my book, Nonprofit Fundraising Hacks, uh, crowdcrux.com slash nonprofit fundraising hacks. I talk about this. The majority of funding when it comes to donating to a nonprofit happens at the end of the year in November and December. And it's because it's the same thing with marketing. People are just thinking there are more of a charitable mindset. They're also at the end of the year. They're getting to the end of their expenses. There are holiday components. There are charitable components when it comes to their church, et cetera. They're in a much more generous mindset. And that's why most nonprofit giving happens at the end of the year. So you can do something like make use of Giving Tuesday, okay? Giving Tuesday. You know, this happens obviously around Thanksgiving. Giving Tuesday is an incredible opportunity if you're not even participating. It's something you should be. It's the lowest hanging fruit, man. It's so easy just to participate and to run some kind of a charity or to do a Facebook fundraiser or to do anything online in order to raise awareness for your cause, in order to get some funding in that bucket, and also get people talking about you on social media. It primes the pump. It gets your name out there, right? You should always be trying to get awareness within for your cause, within your actual demographic. Show them what you're doing. Get excited about this. Giving Tuesday is a great opportunity for your members and for your prospective your perspective donors and people that have you know backed you in the past and donated to you in the past to get involved in what it is you're doing. So go and check out Giving Tuesday and learn a little bit more about that uh, initiative. Number four, and I kind of spoiled this one a little bit, was uh, Facebook fundraising. Okay, Facebook fundraising. Okay, now you can run a Facebook fundraising campaign at any point in time. Now the great thing about this, and why is this a thing, right? Why is this a thing? Well, in my opinion, uh, Facebook basically, and as they always do, they try to copy everyone, right? They, they saw the success of GoFundMe. And I remember back in the day, I was one of the first people to write about GoFundMe. I wrote the book, uh, Crowdfunding Personal Expenses, which is pretty much all about GoFundMe. And I studied this extensively. So Facebook basically, they kind of wanted to enter that territory. So they decided to allow people to raise money on Facebook. And this could be for a birthday campaign, or this just could be for a traditional campaign or for some kind of a cause. And the cool thing is that then this campaign is more likely to be shared on Facebook. Because ironically, that's where GoFundMe campaigns are shared most is on Facebook and on Twitter, right? So you can also, if you want to, run an online fundraising campaign and you actually don't need your own website. You could just run it on Facebook if you wanted to. And you could have the people that are involved in your community or the people that are connected to your organization in some way. If it's a birthday fundraiser, people that are connected to you to donate and support that fundraiser by doing a Facebook fundraiser. Number five, now I'm a huge fan, my gosh, I am such a big fan of making one sale. Okay, what do I mean by that? I mean by that, like why would you work so hard to make a sale and then to have to keep making sales and sales and sales again and again and again? And by that I mean you get one donor and they participate, why not just keep having them participate? Why keep having to tell them again about what you're doing, tell them again about what you're doing and get them involved in the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. Oh, it's such a huge headache. And you have to do that, obviously. If you're amazing and you started a nonprofit or you're one of those early people, one of those early staff members, you know exactly what I'm talking about and just the level of energy, right? <coughs> that fundraising takes. We're never gonna tell anyone else, but the level of energy that it takes. So one of the things that's really easy for you to set up would be what's called recurring I'm totally gonna butcher the name of this, recurring donations, okay? Recurring donations. This is so important, and here's why. You could just have one donor do a one-off donation, become a part of your donor database, and all of a sudden you're gonna to have to send them communications and messages, you have to make sure to always follow up with them and get them participating in the new things that you're doing. Or you could just encourage them 
to become a recurring donor for your nonprofit organization. And you can do this online. There are actually a lot of easy tools nowadays that will actually enable this functionality. I believe you can even now do this on PayPal, right? So what is the difference here? A recurring donor or someone who's giving money monthly to your nonprofit organization. And why might they do that? They might do that because you want to allow them to have a much bigger impact on your target demographic. So there are a lot of different, so many different cases out here. You're trying to educate people in a third world country, right? Rather than just making one simple donation, you say, you know, honestly, we appreciate it. But if you really want to make an impact, this is how you could do it. A lot of the times, and we've surveyed people, right, who actually give money to nonprofit organizations, I talk about that in my book, a lot of people don't give money because they don't feel like their funds are going to make an impact. That's one of the biggest things that's holding people back from like, you know what, I just don't want to get involved. I feel like this is 20 bucks is going to be a drop in the bucket. But if you can show that giving $20 monthly is going to have a sustained impact on someone else's life who is an in need demographic, it is a no brainer, my friend. So make sure when it comes to fundraising ideas, always encourage people to become involved when it comes to recurring donations and make this an option on your website. If you haven't already, such, such an easy thing to do and you will thank me so much in the future when you're just racking up donations and you're not even working for it. All you gotta do is continue to put out those incredible stories of how you're helping people around the world. Number six, number six, the most important one I would say, and um, this is becoming more increasingly important I would say, as we begin to open up from the COVID-19 pandemic and everything that was happening with that, and as we begin to have a little bit more comfort as a society in general with going back and being social, you know what I mean? This is really important. Event, fundraising, slash ticket sales, okay? And there, there are so many different um, sites out there that you can use this for. And a lot of the ones actually will give you those different functionalities. I think it's like classy.org and Causevox also allow you to appear for fundraising, crowdfunding, event and ticket sales. So this is something that's great. And one of the reasons why this might be very super useful, I would say to you, is not only can you run an event, which is based around a particular demographic that you're serving, or to honor people in some way for their contributions or volunteers, to make it just fun, like a fundraising gala. Everyone loves to get you know dressed up and have a, a reason to have a cocktail and to meet some cool new people in the community, right? You can always do a fundraising gala or something like that. But here's even why it is more powerful. The reason why it is more powerful is this is like a golden opportunity in order to take photos, videos, and get incredible social media content. You could even just have someone like an intern at your event whose job is to just interview the people at the event and to ask them, what does it mean when, why do they choose to support this cause? You know, why did they get involved with this? How do they want to help? And just to interview them. And you could even just do this with a cell phone, like with a smartphone. You don't have to have some big fancy camera or something like that, right? Would be so easy to do. And that's like, incredible marketing material that you can publish for years on your Facebook, on your web pages, on Instagram, you can tag people, right? It creates an incredible credibility around your nonprofit organization. So it's a great fundraising idea, but it's also paving the path for the future, which will allow you to do even more and even bigger fundraising events so you can make progress towards your goals. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns uses trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrate today. Link in the description. Number seven, I hope that you're still with me here on this video. And if you are, give me a thumbs up. Tell me that you like this video. Let me know, man. Show me some love in the comment section because I love making these videos for you and I hope that it's really useful for you. Number seven, when we're coming to nonprofit fundraising ideas, what is this gonna be? What can we reveal next, right? I'm talking about partnerships, okay? Partnering with someone else who can almost sponsor a giving program of yours. So you want to call this, for example, like matching donations, we'll just say, okay? And typically, this is with some kind of a corporation. Doesn't necessarily have to be though. It could be with a high net worth individual. It could be just with an individual that cares a lot. It could be with another type of non-governmental organization. Um, but matching donations is incredible because it motivates people where it's like, well, if every donation is gonna be matched, then I'm gonna have twice the impact if I participate in this new event or participate in this Giving Tuesday fundraiser or if I participate in this crowdfunding campaign. 
having matching donations is incredible as well for you to establish a relationship with a long-term corporate sponsor who is then able to see the impact of your work to make a bit of, I guess, a bit of awareness, right, with their own brand within the community, which is why they're getting involved in the first place. I mean, corporations are incredible. Let's be honest. They want marketing. They want awareness. They want exposure. They want people to think good about them. They want people to love them, right? So they want to be associated with these great initiatives. So if there's a corporation that stands to benefit by getting involved, if they want to have a better image in some way when it comes to a practice and how this relates to your demo that you're serving, or they just want to demonstrate to the community that they are involved and that this is important and this is one way that it's almost like they're, they're part of the family. This is a great opportunity for you to get a corporate sponsor involved so you can rally the troops and get more people supporting your nonprofit organization. Number eight, number eight is a little bit, I'd say on the tech savvy side, okay? So this might not be for beginning organization. However, it is extremely powerful and I don't wanna hold back powerful techniques and strategies from you, right? I'd rather just give it to you as it is. And if it's not something you can implement, that's great. Or if you're at that stage, then you can implement something like this. And this is to use text message marketing, which I think is honestly one of the biggest trends this year and is gonna be from the coming years. Text message marketing, so this could be, for example, a text to give campaign. So we're going to say text to give. Now, the biggest thing usually here is people are like, that sounds great, Sal, but how do, do, how do I do that, right? How do I actually implement that? Um, there are a lot of great platforms out there. I've actually done a bunch of different webinars. I've been the guest on many webinars. I've moderated a bunch of webinars with Mobile Cause. I don't have any kind of connection to these guys. They're just super nice. Um, I'd go and check out their site. I like it a lot, Mobile Cause. They have some really good functionality and software for doing test marketing uh, specifically for nonprofit organizations and those kinds of giving campaigns. You can check them out. Um, just a nice shout out. I'm not getting paid for that or anything like that. So texting to give is one option or just encouraging and um, allowing people to subscribe to a text message list where you can then send out communications using your nonprofit fundraising software. Number nine, let's talk about number nine is merch slash swag sales. Okay, merch and swag sales. Now this sounds like kinda, kinda small in some ways, but I can think of a lot of different examples where this has been really powerful. I mean, I think the biggest one is like the Live Strong campaign. You remember back in the days when they had those uh, yellow wristbands and you're raising money for Live Strong, right? There, there are so many different ways you can sell merchandise with your nonprofit in order to empower people beyond some kind of a message. So there has to be some sort of a higher reason that you're doing this. You, know, you can't just be like random swag or something like that. It has to say something. There has to be a message. There has to be the starter of a conversation where people who are wearing this have to feel like they're supporting this in some way and they're moving towards this idealized future that you are trying to create by doing great work with your nonprofit organization and with all the incredible donors and all the incredible volunteers that you are working with. So merch and swag sales is another one. Um, takes a little bit to set up, but it's a really powerful one if you can begin to get that going because then you're actually selling products and you're not just selling your time or you're not just having to always create events or having to do crowdfunding campaigns or do these different things. You actually have products which you can sell that has demand, super powerful. Okay, so the last one I'm gonna mention and then I'm actually gonna share something really cool with you. Um, but the last one I wanna mention is just basically when it comes to raising money as a nonprofit organization, there are so many different ways that you can go about this. I think probably one of the easiest ones if you just wanna really get started with something is to do a challenge of some kind. And that could be an event kind of a challenge. That could be a challenge when it comes to trying to reach a certain goal. Challenge people in some way. People love to participate in challenges. It kind of brings out that like ambitious, fun side of them. So number 10 fundraising idea I would say is to run a challenge. But really, I actually have something that's I think even more important when it comes to this. And I talk about this in my book, Nonprofit Fundraising Hacks. It's really great, it's very slim volume, easy to get through, packed with information, super dense, and really just cuts to the core of what you have to do to get someone to donate money, even if they have never heard of you before. And just to give you like a very bit of a preview here, one of the things that I talk about is the donor pyramid. And I also talk about the fundraising funnel, okay? But we'll just say it for the donor pyramid. One of the most important things that you can do is to not just think about these fundraising ideas. This is great. If you're trying to brainstorm, if you're just a beginner, if you're trying to get some ideas percolating, I know how it is, right? This is great. 
At the end of the day, what matters more is a rock solid strategy for fundraising when it comes to your nonprofit organization, and particularly when it comes to online fundraising. This is incredibly important. You want to think about the donor pyramid and how some of these ideas are going to fit into the donor pyramid. So, for example, peer to peer fundraising might be the bottom of the period where you're bringing in new donors who hear about you from their friends. Same thing might be right with a crowdfunding campaign. When it comes to matching donations, this might be at the higher end of the donor pyramid where you're trying to actually get those elite members who are going to be much bigger donors of everything that you're doing when it comes to your nonprofit and new initiatives and such. Recurring donations, you know, same thing. You can kind of go down the list and you can assign this to different items or to different levels within the donor pyramid. And then, of course, you can talk about the fundraising funnel, which is kind of like the inverse of the donor pyramid and how you can move people through this process so that they go from just participating on your campaigns and all of a sudden becoming a recurring donor, becoming a volunteer, then maybe joining your board or maybe supporting in a much larger way or one of their introductions leads to you having a corporate sponsor, right? There's a whole strategy behind this. So I urge you go and check out my book, Nonprofit Fundraising Hack. And in addition, if you just want it straight from the source, you can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me at the link down below. You can go to crowdcrux.com slash coaching and book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. That being said, I hope you took away some good stuff from this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Come subscribe to this channel. If you want more content like this, give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time.